everyone for joining us today. My name is Kate Simmons. I'm the gallery director for the Alexander Gallery. We're very excited to get to share um, this exhibition with you about time, the work of Mel Olvin. Um, this is our first in-person exhibition since COVID began over two years ago. So it is amazing to get to have the work in the space and share it with our campus community. Um, Mel Olvin is, has been working as a graphic designer for over 45 years, and this is a sampling of his um, work in collage and mixed media construction from mo most recently, but also spanning back um, into those earlier days. And before I introduce you to Mel, I would like to let you know that um, this, the next exhibition to follow this is the Braided Rivers campaign and we will share that from March until June. So I hope that you can continue to enjoy the space and the art that we're, we're um, featuring here on campus. So um, with that, Mel is a Clackamas-based artist. He has had a career in the graphic design industry. Um, I was so fortunate to come upon his work when visiting the historic art services in Aurora, where his studio is located. Um, I just met him upstairs working in his studio, and I was enamored with the prolific quality of his art making practice. Um, there is a, a generous amount of work showcased here, but if you have the opportunity to come see his studio, it, he is a stellar example of what it means to be an artist, just constantly thinking and making and never losing momentum to um, be exploring and making new pieces. So I really felt that was important for our students to get to experience these in Aurora I don't know that it has a street address it's uh, right across highway 99 from the post office on the south edge of Aurora on the second pardon me say how far away you from the folks that have the wine well, we're clear. I think they're in right in town. Yeah, they're in the old bank building. They moved in there. Right. Well, we'll put a link up on the um, on the college's website, Mel, right. so that you can share that. So, um, Mel attended the museum school, um, which is now PNCA. Some of his instructors included George Johansson, Eunice Parsons, um, Lewis Bunce. And so he was informed early on by a lot of art aesthetics. And with that, I would like to introduce you to Mel, Mel Olvin. Please join me in welcoming him. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, thank you so much. It's, uh, I wanna thank the, the college for the opportunity here, and I wanna especially thank Kate for her encouragement and uh, hard work on hanging this show. And it, uh, just a great job. I, I'm really delighted with it. And, and uh, I'd also like to thank my wife for all the encouragement over the years that, to, to be here. So it's really swell. And before I get into any specifics, it's, uh, uh, I want to just read just a couple of lines here that I've kind of put together that talk about where these kind of come from visually in, in, the, in the pieces here. So just bear with me a moment while I do this. And it's about time. My current work relates to just past time. The work is through the lens of what just happened, portraying the aftermath of an event that transpired and the frantic ch charge often left behind. I want to visualize the emotion of what happened internally. These works are single events, echoing voices, music, actions, captured in reactionary energy. They are figurative pieces without figures. And what about time? Everything. The world is commanded and decided by time. No one can escape the hold of time. Time gives us the opportunity to make use of it. Time is precious and valuable. Join us in a journey of time. 
So that seems to be kind of a necessary thing to, to have about why they're there. It's really hard for me to, to verbalize what I'm doing. And oftentimes it, it's just a process that I go through and it kind of happens. And I'll come and I'll look at some of these earlier ones and I'll think, I don't remember doing that. I, I mean, that's maybe not a good thing to say, but it's, it's the truth in my case that I have a, uh, so it also is a good thing because I can come back and, wow, I really like that. I enjoy that. And so it's an encouragement to go on and move on with it. Uh, some of the things about how I work uh, is a little easier to talk about. It's just sort of nuts and bolts and things. What I generally start with is uh, old cat, not even old catalogs, catalogs out of, out of the mail that came. Maybe they're clothing catalogs or component catalogs or they're uh, uh, catalogs on, well, whatever, I guess. And I'll tear them out and I'll paint them with uh, black ink is a kind of a favorite thing as you kind of notice. And also color. And I try to paint them out so that they become abstract. You don't sense the figure in there, the clothing in there, the shoes in there, any of that. It's, they're just shapes. And I'll uh, start by cutting them out. And even before that, I'll, I may start with gray ink. You see that in here. And then come back the next day and a bolder, a darker gray or black even. And then start working from that. All of these smaller ones, they're the earliest one started with that size frame, that size paper, and it was easy to get a kind of a singular, a singular thing going on. That was pretty easy to do. And I might do one a day or every couple of days, and I, and I, always had the notion of going larger. And if I'm getting too far in one direction or another, just haul her out. But moving to this size was, a, was very difficult, even to this size. And these went along for a year or so, and then moving up to this size and then on up to this size. And so it was the, it was the difficulty lay in how, do you, how big do you make some of these things and how can you get out of your source materials something that big, you know? So it was a, a kind of a struggle in there, but a, but a fun one. I, I mean, it's just, it's a joyous process for, with, for me. And I, uh, and I really like that. I've got a nice little studio and it's quiet and concentrate and think. So it was, a, you know, a growth period to go to, to the size there. And this is one of the very latest pieces. And it was on a piece of plywood. And, it just, and it's the very piece of plywood that was in the garage and, and just lying there. So I thought, well, that's a good size, I'll do that. So I, I had some, some thin plywood. So there's plywood in here and there's uh, cardboard and paper and paint and ink and a lot of different things. They're all glued together, Mod Podge, if you know Mod Podge. 
and I knew nothing about Mod Podge. But I, I think I saw it, a, an artist was talking about his work and he was painting this Mod Podge on things. And I thought, man, this is really great. And so here we have plastic over this piece, but we don't here. And you know, it maybe needs another coat of Mod Podge in there, but they're, uh, they're getting pretty well built up and protected, so the framer thought they'd be fine in that. And I, you know, I could go on and on like that, but I, maybe I'll ask for questions, if somebody has any questions on any of that. Was Anyone. Your, was your work, of, uh, when you were a graphic artist, was it commercial then? Yes, now I'm glad you brought that up. Graphic design for me was always a kind of a collage work. You'd put this piece down and this over here and they would kind of balance and you've got a, a white sheet or a colored sheet behind it. And how you would arrange those, it was very much like collage work, except this was a block of copy and this was part of a headline and this was a photo image and those kinds of things in there. And how you would maybe paint that background, and I say paint, but you, you'd pick up a texture from somewhere and maybe photo manipulate it and put it down as a backdrop in there. And it was a way of solving somebody's commercial need. But it was collage work to me. And so yes, they were very much commercial work, so it was done to satisfy them. Uh, my wife and I had a small design business and and it grew some and then it, we pulled it back. It just it was too much management and not enough fun in the artwork. So it was, uh, it was, a, uh, it was good and, and that, but the liberation of, into work that is mine, it was difficult to take criticism back with graphic design and it, uh, I enjoy people commenting on them. I enjoy the, the, the praise in that. And if there's a negative comment, I just, I, die, I don't care, it doesn't bother me. It just, it's just over and gone. And, and I was not expecting that. But it, uh, for me, that's how it worked out. I don't even, I do remember those those days in that time. 45 years is a long time, and almost 50 years. And, and this has been uh, really swell. The only person I need to satisfy here is myself. And that can be difficult, and, uh, but it's also very nice when you go and you, you, you're mired down with something. It, this, uh, this is not working, and you can come back the next day. Sometimes they'll tear it all apart, and I'll kind of build them and then glue them down. So uh, they might come totally apart, or maybe it's just moving some pieces around. And it, and it starts coming out, and it heads in another direction. I don't preconceive. I don't say, okay, I'm gonna have some big pieces here, and this is coming down. None of that, it all ha happens right on the, on the piece. Um, over in these, these are earlier pieces here, and you see they're very traditional collage-like pieces. Cardboard and colored paper, and some painted things, and I enjoyed those, but it, they moved on to, to uh, a little wilder. I had a lot of people that liked the brush and ink pieces I was doing, and they're not represented in here really but it was black and maybe a little bit of color. And uh, Robert Motherwell and, and Franz Klein, very much in, in the nature of what they were doing in 1950. And, 
And I thought, you know, that's just too similar. I mean, I, I, I can't do that, that's not. So I started com doing those br ink and brush and then adding collage to it. And and I think over in this area, there's a lot of ink back in here and it, and it left this block of white in here and it was, it just seemed right to do these pieces in here. And so that started me thinking about how to expand on that. And so the most recent, and by that I say in the last couple of months, are these two pieces and, and some of the others here. Yes. Yes. Um, you spoke about how you're, you challenge yourself with new sizes of uh, pieces. Um, I really like the colors you've chosen. Uh -huh. Have you ever challenged yourself? There seems to be a, 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 a theme with the colors you've chosen. Have you ever challenged yourself trying to use different colors? Well, that's a good question. And. Repeat the question. Oh, the question was, the palette is quite similar, clear throughout. And have I explored, challenged myself with different colors? No. <laughs> and, and I, but, uh, you know, here are some colors that I don't, wouldn't normally use. <laughs> but there are little parts and pieces in there. And, Um, no, they kind of just come, come about. That's where my happy place is, I guess, at, at this time. Piggybacking that question um, about challenging yourself with colors, I, because I've got to work behind the scenes with you to install the exhibition, I saw you grow and develop a little bit, I think, as an artist, <laughs> because when the work came, you had little notes on some of the surfaces um, of these framed works. And if they weren't notes, they were um, sticky pieces of paper, which when I saw them, I just accepted <laughs> them as part of the work. Uh -huh. And you, I asked, uh, is this part of the work? And you're like, no, I'm gonna take that off. That's like a note to myself. And I was like, no, that looks really interesting, the, uh -huh. the depth you're creating. And then you, you bring in this work and you're evolving to um, kind of surpassing the picture plane. Uh -huh. So can you talk to that growth or it's, variation? Well, I don't think of it as a growth so much, and I don't know if you can see here this piece. That, so I took this in to have it framed, and they asked, well, we want to make this white in here white enough that this is encased in, by the frame. And I thought, no, I'll let it hang out there. But that is a, a device, I'm going to call it a device that we used all the time in graphic design where there would be a shape and there would be something inside of it or adjoining it that would cross over, that would penetrate into that other space. And I mean, way early on I can remember discovering that and, and, uh, and I didn't invent it. I, got on the bandwagon with everyone else. And so that was just one of the things that we, we would do and with that. Did I answer those at all? Yes. So I'm curious on, I'm guessing it just depends, but for instance, the one behind you, this sleep deprivation one, did, oh, did I, you, do you title yours then before, after, during? <laughs> uh, no, they're all after. Uh, none of them start out to be something. I mean, they start out to be something, but not a written title. They're, they're, all, uh, uh, they're all titled afterwards. And it started out, and these are some earlier ones here, was there a component in here? It's like this red elongated triangle. 
that's not the title. And, and, and oftentimes the title is not on the front of the piece, it's on the back. So they generally came out of here. Uh, this piece is sleep deprivation one. And to me, it felt like when you wake up in the middle of the night, which if you're over 60 or so, you're accustomed to that, and your mind's running wild. And it, this just felt like that to me. There was nothing to grab hold of. It was, everything was, was slick and hard to hold on to and see what that was in your mind to solve, and they would flip away and something else would come up. And so that's what was around. The one around on the front, <coughs> excuse me, was sleep deprivation too. Same kind of thing. And they were done one right, <coughs> pardon me, one right after the other. And actually maybe it's simultaneously. They were. And this one, I'm gonna have to take a moment here. So do you often, now that you said that, do you, do you often uh, sometimes wake up early and just go to your studio and work? No, I used to do that with graphic design, but I, now I'm kind of lazy and lazy? lounge around a little in the morning and, yeah. and then go or, or not go. And okay. now I feel kind of guilty about it. Uh, this show, well, it took a lot of work. It took a lot of work to get pieces over here and get them organized and get them hung. And it was over a couple of weeks' time. And so I wasn't working in the studio then trying to do art and that. And then the holidays were coming on and, and uh, we've got it all pulled together like virtually the Friday before the Monday it opened and it opened and then three days later, you know, the, the school had to close. And, so it's fits and starts. But and now go in and I think, well, my gosh, I haven't been here in a week. I, you know, I don't know if I know how to do this. <laughs> and, you know, you start messing around and cutting pieces. And, I was very impressed with your layout and your design. Of oh. Pieces. oh. You did a really nice job. Well. <laughs> well, maybe between the two of you. But well, sure, okay, I guess we. Now, I was wondering if you could talk about kind of um, amounts of time in different groupings of work that are showcased in the show. Yeah. The one and days that are on the wall, but behind uh, right. everyone over there. And, and in particular, this grouping, this installation of free suspended work that was done mm -hmm. during an intensive amount of time. Just how like your use of Google to um, inform the compositions and... Yes. Uh, so we approach this with the, the theme of time, about time. And in these, I've touched on it. It's not about, you know, capturing what happened now, but it's after something happened. So this one is, is uh, arcade. Oh yeah, arcade. <laughs> thank you, arcade dude. It's uh, so uh, the titling came after the piece, and it's like, what was it saying? And if I'm talking about time and and after the fact, it's like the. The arcade player, the, the game player, did he, he or she win big or lose big or break even? Uh, you know, it's just, it's like, <coughs> pardon me, the, the craziness that goes on in the, in, <coughs> in the uh, arcade. Which brought us around to the napkins, which were done in about an hour on a long flight and just one right after the other, after the other. So it's how does the time affect that? <coughs> I'm not sure I could sit down and do that at any given time, but it worked at that moment in that airplane. And the 
the pieces back on the wall. Google Maps, I'm intrigued by Google Maps, any maps. But you can go, I mean, we can look at anything, anywhere in the world virtually. And um, then you can, you can Google down and Google down and, and you're on the street. And you can look around, pan around, see storefronts, woods, homes. And you can go along and here's somebody going down the road. So I would kind of focus on them and zero in. And I try to do the, the briefest capture there, that figure, and I'd add a shadow or use the shadow that was there to capture as quickly as I could those. And I called them one-a-days. And I put down the, the date that Google did the photograph and the date that I did the drawing. And it was just a book, and I would try to do one a day, and that lasted for a month or two, and a month. And I started noticing some things, uh, events that transpired right at that spot. Two guys were walking down the sidewalk or alongside the road, and it was in Paradise, California. And the, the photograph was taken before the town burned down. And so then it becomes, where are those guys now? What, what's going on with it? And, it? and it poses questions for me that I don't have answers for at this time. But I have this body of work to draw on to, to, to help discover that. And So there they are. In a very similar vein, these smaller pieces here were done last fall on a trip to Mexico. And I don't notice any color difference or anything, but the shadows down in, in, in that area are super dense and heavy. And the the place we stayed had beautiful grounds and, and you could go on walkways through in heavy, dense shadows. But it's the very similar to all around. And so that was a two week period and I think there was, a, those were about one a day to do. And I thought of them as drawings, very quick things. And e they were easy to do pretty easy to do. And, and I think I kept every single one of them that I did. So, must have been pretty easy. Um, the other, so, so the time there, it's a compressed amount of time to allow yourself to do something. And though, to me, that's a good thing that, because it kind of pushes you to work a little harder. My school teacher, Eunice Parsons, used to criticize me that I didn't work hard enough in school. And, I, and she was right on reflecting. That things came, I could draw well, so I could do the drawing. And she had a life class or, that she taught. And, and I could draw the figure nicely and draw hands and feet and noses and, and it, uh, but she says, you know, you don't push yourself. You get far enough to get a grade, do, satisfy the problem and that, but you don't push yourself. And that always stuck with me and I thought, well, you know, you're right. And it took me a while to, to to work with that and make it work for me. And I, I think I have pretty good work habits now. And then another one, the, the group of the boxes on the wall around on the other side here, they are um, 
they were done over a month's period of time, I think in like about 1985 or 90. And I would go in early, and my studio then was in downtown Portland, and I'd go in early in the morning, and I'd work on those for half an hour or an hour, and, and then get on with work work. And uh, so a lot of this is sort of identify, you know, finding something and working with it and for a period of time. The boxes just sort of dwindled away. None of this was shown anywhere, ever, except uh, in our house. And yeah, none of it ever anywhere. It's sort of realizing that now. So we probably have a few more minutes, Paul. Okay. And I was wondering if you have any words of advice for our students, um, you know, going into graphic design and or just, you know, considering having a career as an artist. Um, did everyone hear the question there? Does anyone else have a specific question about that? Maybe I could drill in a little harder. Anyway, yes? So for art school, I'm sorry, I'm, I, my um, hearing's not so good. <laughs> um, my one fear with going into like a college specifically for art is that it's going to drain me out. Do you think it's like worth it, art school? Well, I went to four years of art school and I really enjoyed it and it was good experience and it, uh, I learned about graphic design, I learned about fine art and I, I'm happy for both of those things. And for me, it's hard for me to, it took me a long time to get through art school. It took about eight years for a four year program. So I was out, I was absent for a couple of years and then back in and I said, Man, I, I I like that too much. So I went back in and finished up, and and it 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 worked well for me. I I've never taught, and except for like covering for somebody um, that I knew within the profession, and so telling someone else what to do is, uh, that's hard for me to do. F again, for me, I am absolutely so thankful that I did get back into school and complete the, my education there. I thought maybe I could take the two years I had, work with that, and then go. That maybe would have got me into to some level, but not the level that I, ended up with and um, and so I'm, I'm really happy I did that and it was it was an inner desire to do that and that's I, I'm sorry that's all I can say about that anyone else um, oh sorry. You, you were talking about how you titled uh, your works after you did them yes Yes, there was a process, and if I had a piece that I felt like was done, the studio is over here and we live here, and it's not too far in between. But in the, the evenings, my wife and I would really enjoy getting together, putting the piece up or pieces, and what do we like about them? You know, do we like them? Are they finished? Is that, do we dislike something? And we, we're getting into titles then, too. And so we would do that in the, the evening. And it's an interesting thing. That, that was the first time we ever collaborated like that. 
on anything. Graphic design, it was done there, it was done, that's the way it is, and don't tell me, and that kind of thing. But on this artwork, it's been a real collaborative effort between us to, to do that. And so that's about the, how, we, how we do that. And we'll talk about what do we like in there. And so I would say, you know, I look at that, I think about my, you know, nighttime dreams or, or nighttime uh, awake periods in the, and so that's how it came about. This was just automatically popped out of my, I think it was my, uh, <laughs> Arcade dude, yeah. <laughs> and I, did, I titled that standing back with a pencil here, and it was more of a note to me than it was a finished um, thing on there. Any other questions? Did I answer that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody? Anyone? Uh-huh. And then it's like, by golly, I am not going to leave this piece of pork until I find the reference. And oh. so really look. Yeah. It it over, but, yeah. You found it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I love the title. Yeah. Never, however, yeah. Them, really. One little thing around, you'll see sketchbooks in that, and that's always been a part. If we would travel somewhere and do something, I'd have a sketchbook along and, and fill that out. So that's part of the time element in it. And there are three pieces over in the corner there that are, uh, one of them was between my junior and senior year, years in high school, and one was uh, uh, this character that's slicing up onions or something. And that was done for a, a client. We ran newspaper ads, and that was at the time when the photography in the newspaper was really lousy, and so if you did these dense black and white illustrations, you could get a, a pretty good uh, reproduction in there. So those are way earlier times, most recent times, and in between times. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mel. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I would like to call your attention to um, a, a signing folder at the front door though for a release. We're really fortunate to have um, this talk documented and so it allows us to go forward and share that with our campus community. If you could please sign that, I'd really appreciate it. And thank you again, Mel.